Hello and welcome to India's coolest online chat show, Chai with me, Lakshmi. We are at www.chaiwithlakshmi.in. Check us out for fabulous webisodes, blog posts and an amazing The Chai Store. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. That's facebook.com forward slash Chai with Lakshmi and the Twitter handle is at Chai with Lakshmi. Let me spell it out for you. It's C-H-A-I-W-I-T-H-L-A-K-S-H-M-I. And now for today's webisode, our special guest, Adil writer, architect and potter, is going to tell us all about tea bowls. Adil Reiter is a potter, ceramist, sculptor and painter whose work has showcased in many galleries across the world. Working with his hands, Adil creates functional wear, aesthetic forms and striking creations on canvas. True to his name, his signature works carry his own writing. Here's the artist sharing his love for the tea bowl and how he makes it. In the British Raj, you know, these Parsi ladies would be drinking tea with a little pinky showing up. There's a certain way of holding it and, and that's all gone, yeah? So these days we make a lot of cups at Mandala which are with or without handles. A lot of people complain that the ceramic handles are easier to break. So we even make them without handles and that sort of slowly moves into the tea bowl category. There is a whole culture of uh, making tea bowls in ceramic circles or teapots of course. There are teapot collectors and there are tea bowl collectors. You won't find as many cup collectors. Somehow the cup has become a little country cousin compared to a tea bowl. So tell me, how is the tea bowl made? You can make them on the wheel. It's called throwing it on the wheel. You can do it by hand. You can have slabs and there's very many ways of doing it. I work with clay. We have various clays that we mix locally. There are some clays which are imported, which I like, which you don't get here geologically. So I get them here. I throw them on the wheel. I prefer to throw these on the wheel very loose. Uh, showing the hands, the, the, the marks of the person who's making it. Sometimes I scribble my name on it, sometimes I have this stamp which I got made. It's a woodcut stamp and that uh, leaves a name behind. I like to leave a few marks on the foot, sort of just randomly like that. At Mandala we do a lot of firings with either wood or gas. The gas firing is more controlled, you get a slightly quieter look. The wood firing, you, you sacrifice it to the kiln god and what you get is what you get. These little bumps and blimps that you have, dimples that you have on the cups, somehow fit into your hand. You know that that cup is right for you, you know, it's, it's talking to you, it's speaking to you, it has a different language and, and that's what's good, it connects. This is what gives it the, the feel of a handmade pot mm -hmm. as opposed to something that's industrially made. It's got, it's got a character of its own. It has a character of its own, completely. It, it, it has a language of its own, it has an aesthetic of its own. These are uh, predominantly tea bowls and teapots from all over the world. I pick them up wherever I go, it's nice to trade. These are very expensive uh, bowls that you cannot just buy out right in the market. So there are pots from all over the world. This one, for example, is from China. This I have made in Australia. Uh, at a place called Sturt. This is an Australian clay that gets all these flashes of color. And uh, the glaze is a rice husk ash. This, for example, is a, is a bowl from Japan. This is uh, salt fired. It's a tea bowl uh, made by Ruth Ann Tudball, who is a very famous salt firing person in the clay world. This is made by Greg Daly, who's from uh, Australia. He's a glaze expert. Look at, look at the finish it's, it's like satin something else you know he calls it the dancing lip this is Mike Dodd from the UK he has a certain way of doing this in slips and his uh, wheat and motif this is a lady from Switzerland she does this kind of decoration with little slip trailers and comes up with this extremely well made controlled firing this is an electric fire piece this piece here was also made in Estonia. This was made by me. I'm known for this little red dot thing thingy. It's, it's my red dot series. So I want a little bit of Indianness to creep into the work. So that's when I started working with this red dot series. I want this dry kind of red that looks like the putu. It's the third eye and you know all that blah blah. And uh, so wherever I go I try to use this and it's sort of become a signature for me now. 
And this was made in Estonia. It was fired in an Anagama firing. And Anagama means a large room. It's a, it's a big kiln. And you fire it over an extended period of time, not just a few 18, 24 hours like we fire here. But an Anagama could be fired for over days and days and sometimes into weeks also. So it's the clay matures and the glaze does things to it that would not happen in a small, shorter firing. This I picked up from a tree ceremony in Japan. Uh, the name of the potter, Fujiyama Jun. Young boy, I was having matcha tea in this, this lovely green color in this at a tea ceremony. And I said, I have to take this home. And it wasn't for sale. But then when I was salivating so much about it, the poor fellow kind of gave me a good price. And I, I mean, look at it. This is just lovely. It just fits into your, fits into your hand. You know, I mean, that's the whole thing. A lot of these will, will be right for you or they will not right for you. And then you just won't feel comfortable using them. You know, it's like that. So where does, you know, the tea bowl come from and what's, what's the idea behind it? There was a time in the 50s and 60s when uh, celebrated known potters like Bernard Leach in England was making good jugs, good tableware, good, you know, functional wear. And then his contact with, let's say, Hamada in Japan and that east and west sort of bridging, it sort of combine the aesthetic of the stiff upper lip British hardy tableware and the loose wabi feel of the East, you know, it can be Japan, can be Korea, can be China. Our can contact with that would probably be more British, you know, with the British tea parties and stuff like that. I mean, they were colonizing us for decades and what they had nothing to do. So they would just sit and why was the five day of cricket, the game of cricket, why was it for five days? They had nothing better to do in India, you know, they've conquered us, they're sitting around at the gymkhanas, sipping tea, you know, <laughs> so. And with that, it's time for me to figure out which is my tea ball. And like Adil suggests, I'll have to play around, hold everything, see what sits in my, in my hands well. Yeah, feel like it's yours. that one. And it's time for me to take my table home. Thank you for joining us on this webisode.